Hello, hello, good afternoon. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Sunday 3.30 p.m. demo at the History Makers Online Crop. We have been learning a bit about Women's History Month as we have been crafting and getting lots of things done in our crafty space, and we've also been enjoying our chat and craft times. If you haven't had a chance to pop on and join us for chat and craft, then you should do that this evening. Uh, we start at seven o'clock and then we go, we go later into the evening. <laughs> and we have been enjoying going through and seeing some of the wonderful things in the January to March catalog. We've been looking at the featured collection for this month, which is the Life's a Hoot collection. Um, which is gorgeous, and there's, you know, there's papers, there's sticker sheet, there's coordinating card stock, there's embellishments, there's digital collection, picture my life cards, stamp sets that coordinate, there are also uh, scrapbooking workshop kits, and these, um, these are really fun to put together, and there's also card making workshop kits, and so lots of different options for people. If you're popping on to watch, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here. And if you're watching later, you can say replay. Hey, Mom, nice to see you're watching. I'm just skipping to the back of the book because I want to show you the stamp set that we're going to be using this afternoon for our demo. And we're going to be using this one here that says kind of a pig deal. And hey, Michelle. And we're also going to be using an embossing folder. It's been around for a while. I don't think I've shown it that often, but it's the botanical embossing folder and um, it's still available online. I'm also going to be using a rectangular stitched frame that has been retired, um, but um, a lot of you would have a similar item in your stash that you can use if it's not the identical same one that I'm using. And um, that's this set of rectangular stitched frames. And I'm gonna be using the middle sized one for this because that pig stamp set really lends itself to having some, some sort of frame because the pig is sitting here and he's kind of leaning over the edge of the fence type of look or over the edge of the trough. <laughs> Depends on whether you're getting ready to munch your corn or whether you're just saying howdy. Um, and I have been loving that little pig stamp for sure. Now, I just need to check something here because I'm not sure. I might have to pull out a piece of paper while we're chit-chatting. But first off, we're going to work on our uh, embossing. And so the embossing folder is nice because it is a five by seven. And this, again, it's the botanical one. I'm gonna be using it with just plain white cardstock. And I've cut this a little bit big because I want to trim it down after I have done my embossing, um, which is a good thing to kind of be aware of. <coughs> that um, if you're doing embossing and you, um, blah, blah, blah. My, my mind is, is going. <laughs> If you're doing embossing and you want um, your edges to be nice and straight, it's better to emboss first and then trim it down to size. If you trim it to the exact size first and then do the embossing, your edges will look a little jiggledy jaggledy, which is a fine look. It's just depending on what you want. Hey, Michelle. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my... Um, paper right in here and I'm going to go right up to the top left corner because that's about where I want it for what I'm doing. Let me grab my machine here and then you just have to make your sandwich whatever it needs to be for whatever machine you're using. So mine I have to pull a couple tabs out here and get some plates in and then I'm going to stick it in. Now some people like to dampen their paper before they emboss. I don't bother. Um, especially because I'm using white. <laughs> so, you know, if it doesn't need cracking, it's just it's just white. But um, I find it works pretty good. And I like to go in and then back out. So you run it through twice. It really probably doesn't make any difference, but it's easier for me to grab all the pieces of stuff coming out when it's closer to me. 
it's more of a pragmatic reason than a, you know, crafting reason. <laughs> and then we'll just fold all this up and get it off the desk out of the way. Like so. So, um, by a show of comments, <laughs> whoever is watching, do you do embossing with embossing folders? And um, what do you most often use it for? Is it for cards? Or do you like to do it for layouts or um, other paper crafting tags and things? So that is our botanical embossing folder. And you can see it creates a really lovely um, raised floral image, which looks absolutely lovely, just left as plain white. But we are going to add some color. And to do that, I have a couple of ink pads here. I have Flamingo and I have Glacier, which are kind of coordinating colors with the um, paper pack for the month, the Life's the Hoot. These are two of those colors, so I guess that's why they were in my brain. And so we're going to start with the Flamingo first, and I've got my blending brush here. And if you haven't tried our blending brushes, they're, they're really cool. I like just playing with them because they're so soft. <laughs> And they're, they're not foam, they're actually little bristles of hair, and, and they just do such a lovely job. So I'm going to take my flamingo, and where's my little, my little mat? I should get my little mat to keep my ink from shoving around everywhere. Okay, and what I want to do is I just want to add a little bit of pink to the flowers. So I'm going to get some ink on my blending brush, and then I'm going to go to one of the flowers, and I'm just going to kind of brush from the bottom of the flower out towards the end of the flower. Just gently brush, 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 like that, until I'm happy with the amount of color. And then I'm going to move to the next one. And this is kind of relaxing, because you're just gently brushing, just adding color. And it looks so pretty and soft. And then let's find another flower. Sometimes when they the ones on the edge, you have to differentiate between the flowers and the leaves. <laughs> so there we go. And let me just lift that up so you can see what's happening. So we're just putting a little bit of color on those embossed raised flowers. And I might even give it a little bit more color towards the ends. And then we're just going to work our way around. And it's kind of like putting blush on, I guess, if you're doing makeup, although I know nothing about it because I don't wear makeup, but um, it's just, you know, just put just enough. That's all you need. My daughter keeps asking me, can I get makeup? And I keep saying, no, nope. <laughs> no, nope, we're not going that route yet. Oh, she's only 12. She doesn't need makeup yet. All righty. And we're just working our way around. And of course, if you wanted to, you could do different colors on these. But I think it keeps it nice and pretty and soft when you just stick with a couple of colors for something like this. Because it's kind of abstract, right? We're not going for heavy detail here. We're just adding a little bit of color. And there we go. We've got all of our little flowers. I don't think I missed any. Oh, I might have missed one right down there. But that one's probably going to get cut off. I think that's good. Maybe that's a little flower, but again, it might get trimmed. Okay, and now we're going to bring in the glacier, and this might seem odd. We're going to do our leaves in glacier, which is not maybe a typical color for leaves, but I just thought we would keep it, keep it pretty, and so I'm grabbing my other brush. Now, I have um, six of these. They come in packs of three, and I have six of them, and I've only used five. So I have one that I do all my pinks and reds with, one that I do all my greens, one for all my blues, one for yellows, and one for sort of browns and blacks type of thing. Um, I don't have one yet for like oranges or purples or anything because I don't really use too many oranges or purples. So, you know, you only need one for a color family. And if you're worried about any... Um, any ink transference, you can rub that off. You can even wash them, but they really hold very little ink um, compared to like the foam sponges. And so, you know, you don't have to worry about it. It's all good. 
So again, I'm just going to go ahead and go on the leaves here and add a little bit of color. And you can kind of use the tip of the brush if you want. It's a little bit harder to get color on the stem, but you just kind of glide it over. You don't want to push too hard because if you push too hard, you'll be pushing the bristles down to the background. And we don't really want to color the background. We just want to color the little viney bits, the little viney bits. And it's going to be very soft. And that's what we're going for. So if you're, if you like really bold colors, this is maybe not the technique for you. But if you like sort of that vintagey look, the shabby chic look, or the soft sort of spring pastel, or, you know, um, if you were doing something for uh, a baby shower or something, this would be super cute. And we're just going all over. It does not take long. You can do this while you're watching a show or chatting with your friends. That's what I was doing this afternoon. I was playing with this and we were chatting and crafting. And just work your way all the way around. Now we're almost done. Just a couple more leaves to go. Just like that. And you know what? I'm actually probably dipping into the it dipping into the ink more than I even need to because, you know, it does have a decent amount of ink on it to uh, to do a few leaves. But it's kind of a habit, right? <laughs> it reminds me of um, I used to help out in my uh, library at public school. And, you know, you'd get the big stamp pad and you get the ching, 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 and you get to stamp the date. Yeah, that was always fun because you kind of felt like you had power when you were in charge of that stamp pad, right? <laughs> so there we've got our background and I'm going to trim this down let me grab my little trimmer and I want to trim this down to um, four by five and a quarter and actually I'm going to have trouble with that I can trim the four but I can't trim the five and a quarter so let me just go ahead and trim a little bit here Ooh. That went kind of funky. Let me grab my big trimmer. I don't think I had a very good grip on that piece of paper. And it shifted while I was trimming. All right, let's try it this way. Scooch that off. Give it a little trim. Like so. This is why I don't use usually bring in my big trimmer. Because it's a hefty trimmer. And I'm going to trim just a little skiff off the edge here to straighten it up. And then we're going to trim the four inch like so. We're just taking a little skiff off the edges. Woo. And then five and a quarter. Just to get them nice and straight. All the little bits. Okay. Mmm, hefty. Big trimmer. <laughs> okay, there we go. And my card base is hanging around somewhere. Maybe I didn't get a card base. Maybe I did. Oh, there it is. It's underneath the little trimmer. <laughs> you know, talented. Okay, so I've got my value pack card base and I'm going to fold it with the three scored line, the bump side to the inside. And just score this down like this. Michelle, no orange. I know, it's sad. But I actually don't have. The closest thing I have to orange is the Sundance, which is actually kind of a yellow. But it does have a tinge of orange. But now, I do have Distress Oxides in orange, right? Um, so that's good. Hey, Ellie, nice to see you're watching. You like doing embossing on cards. Michelle likes embossing on cards. Hey, Jillian. I'm just looking at my comments here. I got distracted. I got distracted by the ink and the embossing. <laughs> yes, that look with the color when you go on so soft like that. It looks so pretty and kind of romantical. And, you know, that's it kind of looks cool that way. Hey, Robin, nice to see you joining in. You're busy cleaning in the basement. Oh, boy, it's a weekend. Everybody's busy doing the things. So I'm going to bring back in my Glacier ink. Hey, Joanne, no worries. You can be late. That's totally allowed. 
<laughs> yeah, my stamp pad holder. This is um, this is from my mommy when we went uh, to a retreat at her house. Uh, she gave everybody one of these, and it's just a piece of the you know the drawer liner that you put in your drawers so your cutlery and everything doesn't slide all around. And so it's just like a little bit of rubbery, but it keeps your stamp pad from shifting around on your desk. It works perfectly. So what I'm going to do is I've got my my card base here, and I'm going to bring in a piece of glacier that's been cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, which is the same size, and I'm going to use it on the light side. So this is the dark side, the true color, and then I'm going to use it on the lighter side, but I'm going to ink the edges just quickly using my mini ink blending tool and go around. I don't always ink edges, but sometimes I get in the urge. And I think with this soft inking that we have done, I think the inked edges will look nice, especially on that embossed paper. Sometimes I find the cut edge of the um, embossed paper just needs a little extra to kind of define the edge and make it look finished. So go ahead and we're going to stick this down. Do, do. Get some adhesive on there. Take the backing off. And when I add things that are the full size of the card, I like to put my fingertips right on the edge of my card and then hold my piece at about a 45 degree angle so that the adhesive isn't sticking to anything and just slide it up to my fingertips so that I can feel the edge of the fold and I can feel the piece of cardstock and then just top and bottom, check, make sure, and then stick it down. And it always seems to do pretty good for me. And then we can go ahead and ink the edges of our embossed piece as well, just to give it that nice little extra touch. All the way around. And I, I find that this is better for doing this than the brushes. So they all kind of have their own their own use, right? <laughs> and I probably should have left that little mat under my ink because it's wobbling around, but oh well. <laughs> I put it over there, and I'm almost done now. There we go, all the way around. How pretty. So let's stick this down. And again, this was cut to the four inches by five and a quarter. So we're going to have a little edge of the glacier showing all the way around. I'm going to put a little extra adhesive on here because with the raised embossing, it doesn't always touch in all the places. And I'm actually going to put a little bit of liquid glue as well, just to make sure that it's going to stay stuck. I don't need a lot. I just want a little insurance. Just a little. There we go. Just like that. Because there's lots of little lumps and bumps on here. So you want to make sure it gets stuck. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. Let's make sure our card opens the right way. Yes, okay. Because I have done it where I've done it upside down. You have seen me do it. <laughs> and just go ahead and lay that down. Isn't that so pretty? Oh my goodness. The lovely soft, soft colors on that. Isn't that gorgeous? I love how that comes together like that. Now, we're not done. We are not done because we have that cute little piggy that we're going to bring in. I'm just going to leave my um, ink over here. We've got our little piggy from our stamp set. Ooh, got extra piece there. And I've got it loaded up on here. And remember how I said I was going to need an extra piece of paper? <laughs> Let me just grab that because I have a piece here. But when I went to check it, it wasn't big enough for the stamp. Let me just check and see if this one, maybe the other one will be bigger. Maybe... Yep, yeah, it will. Let's see though. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, it will fit. Okay. I was concerned that it wasn't going to fit. <sighs> you know, I get ahead of myself. All right. There we go. And let's grab our intense black ink for this because we are going to do a little bit of coloring on this little piggy. But we're stamping it right onto the flamingo paper. So we don't have to do a lot of coloring. So this is a good tip if you're somebody who's kind of new to using markers or watercolor pencils. If you start out with your main image already on colored cardstock, there's a lot less coloring to do, right? All you got to do is just add some shadow, add a couple details, and you are good to go. Now, you might think my table's wobbling a lot. It's because my table is on wheels, frankly. And so it does. It does wobble a lot. And there we go. Oh, my goodness. I love this little piggy. You're kind of a pig deal. So cute. Now, I've got one other piece that I'm bringing in, and that is this little frame that I use the stitched rectangle frames for. And I might as well ink the edges on this, too. Once you start, you got to finish. So let's go ahead and add some ink. Whoops. It's, it's, it's a skinny little frame. I want to pop. It wants to pop right out of my hand. There we go. And I'm only going to do the outside edge. I could do the inside edge, but, you know, um, life's too short. <laughs> We don't need to do all the edges. We'll just do the outside. Just looking at my comments there. Sorry, there was a big long pause there. <laughs> I was just checking out the comments because I find when I start crafting, I, um, I totally blank and forget to look over there. And then at the end, I'm like, oh, people were asking me questions and I totally didn't answer them. And so this frame is going to be offset because I think that looks really pretty on when you're just kind of putting a floating frame on something to have a little offset. You could put it in the center, but I just like to have it just kind of down in one corner and that kind of gives you a nice little um, asymmetrical look. So we're just going to set it there for now. We need to come and deal with our little piggy. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to color... The little green leaves up in the flowers on his head. And I have my light green tri-blend marker. And I'm going to use the mid-color. And I'm just going to quickly add color. And this, again, this is a great stamp for practicing coloring on. Because there's not a lot to color. All the little bits are so tiny that you're just kind of touching your tip to it. And that's it. Like, there's no real skill that is required. <laughs> this is totally my kind of coloring. There we go. And then if there's any parts where it just kind of looks like there's nothing there, you could just add a little dab of green. Because, you know, it's just green. Add a little bit there. Good. Good. And then we want to color the flowers. Now, because I've already got pink... Um, I, I need to do something a little stronger, so I'm going to use the light, sorry, the bright pink, and I'm going to use the mid for this as well. Sorry, that's wobbling around all crazy. So the bright pink, and I'm just going to color all the flowers. And again, like I said, this is just basically touching, touching the tip and moving along. All these little flower petals are pretty small. Just work your way around. And all the big ones and all the little, well, they're all pretty little, but there's some, there's some of the little ones that are a little bigger. <laughs> all the way around. So do you guys like coloring? Is coloring your thing or do you avoid it at all costs? I used to avoid it at all costs. I could not color to save my soul with markers. <laughs> And so I stamped in black and I left it with color. The only way I added color was with cardstock because I couldn't, um, I couldn't make, I couldn't make markers work. It always just looked so icky when I was done with it. So, um, I finally tried these and I was super happy. So I'm using the ice gray blend here and I'm adding some shadow 
underneath the flowers, just across the forehead here. And then anywhere there's a lot of uh, drawing lines already on here, I'm just going to add some gray to that. Just kind of fill in, so even around his eye, on his nose. This sketchy pattern, and I've said this before, sketchy stamps like this, where there's sort of drawing lines, are great for learning where to add the shading because the shading is already there. You're just enhancing it. You're just adding a little bit more. And so just follow the lines. You can go under his chin. I think my light gray is actually kind of wearing out. I'm going to have to get another one because I use it a lot for shading. <laughs> so there we go. Oh, and I'll do a little bit down on his little feet there. And then I'm going to go to the mid of the ice gray blend. And I'm going to go right up tight underneath because this is a little darker gray. So right where the shadow starts, it's a little darker. You just follow along the edge like that, and then you can go under his nose, and under his chin, and in his ear, and just in the places where you think a little extra dark gray should be. Just add that in, and a little bit down here, and there we go. That's it. Easy peasy, all colored. But you know, now that we've done that, we have to fussy cut out our cute little piggy. And so I'm going to actually ignore this edge that he's leaning on. So I'm going to trim right, right through there. And then for his little front feet, we're actually going to cut right close because we have to kind of edit out those horizontal lines. So we're going to trim as close as we can without cutting off too much of the stamped line. And I don't do this often. Usually I leave some space. But just this once. <laughs> we're going to trim close. Just because we're editing out that, um, that horizontal line. All the way around. Doo -doo -doo -doo. And I like to pivot my paper. Now, once we get past that little line, we're going to come out. Because you can see the edge of this little piggy is not a straight line. He's got little bristly fur, little bit bristly hairs like a pig does. And so we're going to slowly come out and leave the halo. Right? So now we're leaving a little bit of pink halo around our little piggy. And he looks so cute. I'm going to need to trim off some of this excess that's trailing along here. And then just continue... When you get to the flowers, you're going to do a lot of twisting. So just twist and twist. And it's up to you how close or how detailed you get with your fussy cutting. And just go around. This is also why it's a good idea to leave the little halo at this <laughs> on the top half. Because you got to deal with the flowery bits as well as the bristly hairs okay and even when you're going over his ear if you want to do a little bit of wiggling to kind of get that bristly hair look you can totally do it so it's not a completely straight line and work your way down and there we go we'll give him a few more little jiggles as we go so cute Oh my gosh, I love the little piggy. Now there's one more step before we can put him in his final spot. And that is we need to trim just on his little leggies. We're going to come up here just to the left of that line for his leg and give a little snip. And then we're going to come over here just to the right of this one and give a little snip. And then we're going to come over here to the left and just give a little snip. And what that's going to allow us to do is we're going to be able to take our little frame and we're going to be able to put his little piggy feet in front, but we're going to be able to tuck some of his little piggy body in behind. Let's get his ear, his ear to the front, eh, ear to the front. And we can tuck his little body in there like that. And then in between the legs, we can tuck that in. 
And there, now he looks like he's kind of popping out of a window, just like that. And so let's just double check, make sure his ear is not going to go over the edge of the card, because that's important. We're going to scooch him just a smidge. Yep, all we needed was a little, a little piggy hair width moved over. And then we can flip it over to the back. And we're going to add some glue to our frame and our piggy. So let's go all the way around. Now, I was doing this earlier, and I gave a big squeeze, and a big blob came out, and it did it again. I wasn't patient waiting for the glue. So I give it a big squeeze. And there we go. And I'm not going to glue down his little ear, because I want his little ear to kind of stick out and be like a little piggy ear that it is. And have some freedom and there we go stick our little frame down make sure it's touching everywhere that you want it to stick where all those embossed pieces are sticking up and then we need one more thing we need to add our sentiment on here so I have the one that says tickled pink for you which I thought was just the perfect sentiment and somewhere I had a piece of paper for us to um, to stamp on, but I forgot to trim it. So let me just go ahead and trim some. See, I was playing with it earlier. Realized it was a new stamp that I had not, um, I hadn't seasoned it. So when I stamped it, it was like, oh, that doesn't look right. So seasoned it and started again. Let's grab our ink. And we can go ahead and stamp this up. Now, let's see. I'm going to move it closer to me so I can see, hopefully, what I'm doing. And I should be using the back side. Give it a nice little squish. Yay! I mostly got it centered. I like it when that happens. Now, I want to tuck this under here. So I've given myself some extra room and hopefully didn't glue my little piggy down too much. See how I can still kind of slide it under there? So I need to trim a little bit off of this end, like so. And then I'm also going to need to trim a little bit off the other end, like so. Do, 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 do. In fact, I'm going to do just a hair more. I'm throwing pieces of paper all over my desk. And we'll even give a little tickety tick, like that. And we might as well ink the edges because we inked everything else. So let's grab our glacier and our foam. Actually, there's probably enough ink <laughs> on the foam already that I probably don't have to add any more, but I will. Because it's like a habit, right? You got to dip it. It's like when you're eating chips and guacamole. <laughs> it's, just, it's habit. You got to dip it. Alrighty. Then we can go ahead and add this. And I'm going to go right back to the liquid glue on heat, on embossing. Oops, can't pick it up. On embossing, the liquid glue just really helps because it kind of sinks down into the nooks and crannies and gets better adherence than like the tape runner and stuff. So we're going to tuck this under the edge of our little piggy. Tickled pink for you. So that is a great one for like congratulations for somebody who's maybe... Um, you know, going off to university, graduating from high school, you know, got their first job, getting a new car, any kind of celebratory thing, right? And now let me just see, I want to grab some little sparkles, some clear sparkles and some bitty sparkles that I forgot to get out before we started. And let's add a little bit of bling on here, because we can't have this cute little piggy without a little bit of bling. <laughs> Michelle says she loves coloring now that she has these markers. 
Yes, Ellie, you're right. It is about practice. The more you practice, the better you get. Um, and um, it's like anything, right? Like famous basketball players didn't become famous overnight. They had to practice, a lot of practice. And it's the same thing with anything. Learning a, we're learning an instrument, you got to practice. All right, so let's see. Where are we going to go with our blings? Let's put a little bling here, kind of at the base of that flower. And then let's pick, I'm using my piercing tool because that helps me to, to grab onto things. Another little bling up there. And then maybe a bigger bling over here, over here, over here. I think right there, like right above his little head. So cute. Yes? No? Hmm. Yep. We're going there. <laughs> I was just, because the flower's there, I was like, do I want it there? Yeah, I do. I kind of want it there. <laughs> so there is our cute little Tickled Pink for You card featuring the glacier and the flamingo. And we have our cute little It's You're a Pig Deal piggy that looks so much like Charlotte's Web, um, like Wilbur. And um, and then we've got that beautiful botanical embossing folder, adding the ink with our blending brushes, just kind of working our way down the embossed raised bits, and then inking all the edges, layering up with glacier cardstock and a stitched frame, fussy cutting and adding him outside the little frame, and of course our sentiment and a few little bling bling blings, just to make our little piggy shine, shine, shine like he should. All right, I hope you enjoyed seeing uh, one way to use our fun embossing folders and combining it with stamps and thin cuts. All right, have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll be having one more game posted at 6 o'clock, and then um, we'll have our chat and craft starting at 7 o'clock this evening, and um, the deadline for getting any challenges or games done is um, 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, because that's you know, 8, 8.30, because then I'll start doing the um, tally for the prize draw at 9 o'clock. If you're interested in placing an order, you'll want to do that before 11 a.m. tomorrow. And that way you can get into the prize draw and take advantage of the little shipping discount. All right. Have a wonderful afternoon, and we'll see you again soon. Toodaloo. Bye.